Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. There's a gold rush happening right now, and it's not about oil, not about gold, and not even about real estate. It's about data centers, the beating heart of artificial intelligence. If data is the new oil, then data centers are the new refineries. And India, of all places, has suddenly found itself at the center of this global scramble. In the past three years, since AI exploded into mainstream life with apps like ChatGPT, Claude, and Gemini, tech companies have been racing to secure data center capacity. India's story here is wild. Back in 2018, the country's data center capacity was just 0.3 gigawatts. By April 2025, it had already climbed to 1.26 gigawatts. And according to Collier, it's on track to cross 3 gigawatts in the next 5 years, pulling in somewhere between 20 to 25 billion dollars in investment. This is a complete structural shift in digital infrastructure, and the scale is mind-bending. In July, reports came out that Google was in talks with the Andhra Pradesh government to set up a 1 gigawatt facility. Just one month later, Sam Altman said OpenAI was exploring plans for a 1 gigawatt data hub in India. To put that in perspective, older facilities were measured in tens of megawatts. Today, they're planning in gigawatts. But here's where it gets tricky. Data centers are absolute monsters when it comes to electricity consumption. A typical AI-focused hyperscale center can consume as much electricity as 100,000 households. The biggest project, planned in Mumbai, that's expected to consume as much electricity as 2 million households. Think about that. And it's not slowing down. Globally, the International Energy Agency estimates that electricity consumption from AI-enabled data centers could grow sixfold by 2030. Right now data centers account about 1.5% of total electricity demand worldwide. By the end of the decade, that's expected to double to 3%. In India, growth is aligned with this global trend. Its capacity could grow 2.5 times by 2030. But here's a surprising twist. Even with this explosion, India's data centers are projected to contribute less than 1% of total global carbon emissions. That sounds small. But remember, these emissions are among the fastest growing, so the stakes are high. On one hand, you've got this massive demand, with hyperscalers like Microsoft, Amazon, and Google pushing workloads into India. On the other hand, you've got real concerns about straining local power grids and pumping out more CO2. This is where the conversation about AI itself becomes fascinating, because the very technology driving this demand is also being touted as a solution. The IEA released a report in April 2025 called Energy and AI, and it made a nuanced point. Yes, AI is increasing electricity consumption, but at the same time, AI applications can dramatically optimize energy use. Better weather forecasting, for example, can allow more solar and wind power to be integrated into grids. AI can improve the efficiency of buildings and factories, lowering demand and improving competitiveness. It can even help design better batteries, which could extend the range of EVS. If those AI applications are rolled out at scale, the emission reductions could be three times greater than the emissions caused by data centers themselves. That's the moonshot vision, AI as both the problem and the cure. Zooming back into India, it's clear why the world is so interested. Unlike Singapore, which has run out of land for massive centers, or Japan, where costs are higher, India has the space, the labor, and relatively low power costs. Add in its rapidly growing renewable energy capacity and a giant pool of engineering talent, and suddenly it looks like the perfect destination for the next wave of global data infrastructure. No wonder giants are rushing in. NTT from Japan, STTGDC from Singapore, and Equinix from the US already hold major shares of India's capacity. Domestic players like Cottrell S and Airtel-owned Nextra are scaling up too. And then there are the billionaires. Gautam Adani's joint venture with Edge Connex, called Adani Connex, is moving from less than 40 megawatts to 210 megawatts soon. Mukesh Ambani's Reliance is reportedly planning a 3 gigawatt megadata center in Gujarat with an investment between 20 and 30 billion dollars. That alone could reshape the entire industry. Real estate developers are even pivoting. The Hiranandani Group launched Yoda Infrastructure, moving from luxury housing into hyperscale data centers. Anant Raj developers announced a 2 billion dollar push, targeting 300 
megawatts of capacity by 2032 and their stock price doubled since declaring entry into the sector. Pune's Panchshil Realty is making the same pivot. It's become a land grab, with luxury developers turning into digital landlords. But here's the catch. India isn't the easiest place to build. Developers face a maze of 30-plus approvals from different agencies. A U.S. operator called Colt bought land in Mumbai back in 2018 to build a 100 megawatt site. It took them six years to finally go live, and only 22 megawatts are operational. To speed things up, they signed a $1.7 billion joint venture with RMZ Infrastructure in 2024, targeting 250 megawatts across Navi Mumbai and Chennai. And then there's land. Data centers need massive litigation-free parcels in specific locations. Many global players rely on Indian property groups to clear disputes and hand over land, often building and leasing out the centers themselves. It's created a new hybrid real estate tech sector, but oversupply is a risk. Fierce competition has already sparked price wars. Compared to Indonesia, India's data center pricing is significantly lower because a few players are undercutting just to win hyperscaler contracts. Analysts Analysts say consolidation is inevitable in the next two to three years. Now, step back and think about the bigger picture. Globally, the AI revolution can only go as far as the energy transition allows. Data centers are one of the biggest loads on modern power grids. A single hyperscale campus can eat up a gigawatt of power. Renewable energy is crucial, but it's intermittent. Nuclear power offers stability, but comes with politics and long timelines. The real breakthrough could be hybrid renewable power solutions solutions, solar, wind, pumped hydro, and battery storage all tied together. India has the right ingredients, abundant solar and wind, viable pumped hydro sites, one of the world's strongest national grids to move power across regions, and subsea cable infrastructure that connects it to the global internet backbone. Add to that one of the largest engineering talent pools in the world, and you can see why experts say India could become the data center capital of the world. But to get there, the country has to move fast. Policymakers need to expand round-the-clock renewable energy tenders, modernize interstate transmission, streamline clearances for new data center parks, and support domestic battery storage manufacturing. Done right, this could bring billions in foreign investment, create millions of jobs, and make India the most sustainable and cost-competitive data hub on the planet. This is more than just a business story, it's also a moral responsibility, delivering clean, affordable, reliable energy is the foundation for powering the digital economy without wrecking the climate. Some have even compared India's role here to mythology, calling renewable innovation the modern Sanjivani Bhuti the life-restoring herb, because if India gets it right, it could sustain the world's digital future while cutting emissions. So where does that leave us? On one hand, you've got exploding demand. With India's capacity racing past 3 gigawatts in the next 5 years, you've got global and domestic giants billionaires, and luxury developers all piling in. On the other hand, you've got electricity demand set to double, power grids under strain, and emissions rising. AI itself might provide solutions, but only if governments, companies, and innovators align to scale those applications. The future of data centers, AI, and energy are all tied together, and right now, India is standing at the crossroads of an opportunity unlike anything we've seen before. That's where I'll wrap this deep dive. If you found it useful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and and ring the bell for more breakdowns on AI, energy, and the future of technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.